Haley, thank you for that most awesome introduction, although well-deserved. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Let's just deal with this shit here. Uh, this woman, co-founder of the Purpose Institute, co-author of our book, co-author of The Amazing Faith of Texas, uh, and also the best purposeologist on the planet. No kidding. The best. Um, you know, I, was, I got in from New York at 1.30 this morning, and I always tell people, if that's the worst shit that happens to me, I'm in good shape, right? I was talking to a mass group of people. I was fantastic. And they were, it was a summit, and they said, what do you think is the worst thing about a summit? And I said, well, most of them are boring. And I said to the whole 2,000 people, I didn't mean that theirs was, but I said, you know, I used to tell people who were really sick and only had a couple of days to, get, to live, go to a summit, it'll seem a lot longer. <laughs> but it is great to be here with all the Conscious Capital Tribe. I've, I've missed y'all, and uh, we have work to do, don't we? Not just with business, but America. We have work to do. And uh, greetings from Austin, Texas, live music capital of the world. Sorry, Nashville. Get over it. And um, <laughs> you can go to ACL this weekend with another 150,000 of us. And if we could put up that one slide. Um, it's also home of me and Matthew. Let's just deal with this. Okay. <laughs> so I'll tell you just a quick story. Matthew and I were together uh, two months ago at the Austin Convention Center, 11,000 people from every convention bureau in America was there. So we did a little skit on stage, and we said, thank you for coming to Austin. We really want you to have a lot of fun. We want you to eat a lot. We want you to drink a lot. We want you to listen to live music a lot. We want you to hug a lot, you know what I'm saying? We want you to spend a lot. And then he said, and then we want you to leave. <laughs> so there you are. You can take that down or they'll not look at me. Okay, real quick. Um, about 10 months ago, I started thinking, um, you know, I got lucky in life. I got on the road to purpose early and I didn't even know it. And my quickest story is my sister was born with spinal bifida. And back in the late 40s, that's the birth defect where all the nerves of your supposed to go in your leg end up in an open wound on your back. And uh, back then, supposed to live to be four days or four months. And my sister Susan lived to be 49 years old because of my mom. And all the kids would push her stomach to take her to the bathroom. We didn't know that was not what you do because she couldn't herself. We rubbed her legs every night so she didn't have bed sores. And I pushed her to school every day, even when I couldn't see Harley over the wheelchair. And all my brands of brothers and sisters would walk in my little town with me. We looked like the grapes of wrath. But anyway, um, pushed her every day for eight years, every day, school. And then she graduated from high school, which is, she came to Austin and don't get mad, but every Saturday, every Sunday, I'd push her, would listen to the Dallas Cowboys and eat Whataburgers. And I don't care if Whataburgers, Conscious Capital or not, they're fucking great. So, <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sometimes we just got to get over it. Anyway, um, um, and... I was in her bed when she passed away. She was 49. And <clears> the <throat> epiphany I had all these years, uh, I thought I'd been pushing her. She'd been pushing me. And she used to always tell me, you don't have to have legs to fly. And this is what I'm going to talk about today. We don't have to have legs to fly. So I got on this journey obsessed about 10, 10 months ago, and I was reading... Jim Collins' old book called How the Mighty Fall. If you haven't read it, it's thin. And I was thinking about America. And then, Raj, I started reading, I don't have to suck up to you, but Firms of Endearment and Conscious Capital and Good to Great. And I just started, and by the way, when you get on a road to purpose, Roberta and I were talking about this, 
you get obsessed with it because it's not about you. And these random things that you normally don't look at start are random, but then they end up being a pattern. So I started obsessing about all this kind of stuff and, and uh, reading about w- what is the one thing that all pr- performing companies and movements have in common? And I know there's a lot of critical elements, but I'll tell you, I believe this in my heart. What they have in common is a higher sense of purpose. And so when you're there, you're very sensitive, and purpose moments come into your life that normally they don't when you're really focused on this. So I get a call on Labor Day three weeks ago. Roy, this is Bill. Uh, Stay with it here just a minute. I need your help. We have five former presidents who want to do a PSA for the victims of Harvey. This is Labor Day. And then W gets on the phone, too. There's only one person we trust. We don't like you, but we trust you. <laughs> now, here are the two things you need to understand about this. First of all, you got to film all five former presidents tomorrow. This is Labor Day. And they're in five different locations. Maine, Dallas, Plains, Washington, California. And there's one other little small thing. You have to be on the air the next night because the NFL has given us a PSA on the first game, NBC. I said, no problem. So I hung up and started crying and called my daughter. <laughs> and started calling my daughter who has a marketing firm. This is where purpose happens when the greater good is at stake. She called around the country. I did too. My partner, Judy Tabulsi, the next morning, we had five production crews all ready to film all five former presidents. And then I'm watching TV at four in the morning because I don't sleep because we're going to have plenty of like eternity to sleep. So get over it. Don't sleep. I don't care what they say. (laughs) Trust me. And at four in the morning, I realized that Irma was coming. And we were doing the PSA for Harvey. Called my daughter. It's 2 in the morning there. Told her we had to do two scripts. All done. We filmed from Maine to California the next day. Got all the footage in. It was on the air the next night. These former presidents put aside their differences for higher calling. So let's, I'll show you this spot real quick. Recently, our country has witnessed catastrophic devastation. Hurricanes and flooding have upended lives and livelihoods. Across this great country, Americans have answered the call. That special calling that compels us, when others are down, to step up and do whatever it takes. America's at our best when, against all odds, we come together and lift each other up. Please donate to OneAmericaAppeal.org. America needs you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I had uh, two friends in Houston from my hometown of Brownwood that were living in a church. They were the Red Cross from Brownwood, Texas. And when this spot hit the air and all these people in the church saw it, they basically said, if they can put aside their differences, we can too. And then for some reason, Haley, I started, this is this random thing going on in my life right now, thinking about America. I started, went back and, re- and saw the spot that I, I did right after 9-11. A lot of you have seen it, but I was, the Air Force is our account. We were at, in Washington when the Pentagon got bombed. And uh, I'm on, on the way home in a car trying to get home, trying to figure out what is it we can all do. And I thought, I'm most worried about... In the process of striking back at one of our enemies, we might strike one of our own because they look different or sounded different. I pick up the phone along with our colleagues again. The creative community answers the call. Ten directors around the country the next day was filming. And this spot that you're going to see, and you've seen it, but I want you to see it in today's world. This was 9-11. What was it? How many years ago? All right, I want you to see it in today's world and see does it still play. 
It got on the air and ran more than any other PSA in the history of advertising. So let's play that one. I am an American. I am an American. I'm an American. I am an American. I'm an American. I am 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 an American. I I I I am an American. I am an American. I I am an American. I am American. I am America. I'm an American. I'm an American. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. I'm an American. I am an American. I am an American. I can I can hardly breathe when I see that. And then I reflected back another random act of the campaign we did in 1984 called Don't Mess With Texas. <laughs> Started with Clyde Breaths and Stevie Ray Vaughan. It was an anti-litter campaign. And everybody was, oh, you can't do that. You've got to do Keep America Beautiful or whatever. <laughs> and I said, Keep America Beautiful. The Sierra Club loves that campaign. They don't friggin' litter. Billy Bob Bowtree from Tyler, Texas litters. And they, oh, we got to put a litter barrel on the Don't Mess With Texas bumper sticker. And I say, great, we can do that. And we'll have a lot of bumper stickers in the warehouse. Or we'll have no litter barrel on the bumper sticker and a lot of bumper stickers on pickups. We reduced litter by 76% in three years. No regulation. <laughs> no regulation. No fines. No penalties. We changed behavior through marketing. And then it dawned on me. America needs to change. And I am in this process. I was in New York yesterday, Haley. 50 CMOs, 50 of the largest companies in the world are joining me in this project. Because it dawned on me if great companies are driven by purpose, if great movements are driven by purpose, why can't America not be driven by purpose? So we're launching the Promised Land Project. That's a good name, isn't it? it I own it. Don't try to steal the shit, okay? Don't be, don't be unconscious capitalist here. I'm obsessed. The Promised Land Project. We're going to mobilize the digital purpose-inspired gurus of America, the marketing purpose. And by the way, most marketing people right now want to do something in their life besides sell Snickers. And when I talk to them about it, they go, I'm in. I, so, and the purpose of the Promised Land Project is to build a culture of us, as in USA, where America is winning on purpose. And um, let me tell you what it's going to be. This is not for the tired or the timid. It's never been done before, and I'm not saying we're going to do it, but damn it, we're going, to, we're going to jump off the building and build the wings on the way down on this one. Bottom line, it's like the Manhattan Project at World War II. It was like Kennedy's call for a man on the moon. It was like Reagan telling Gorbachev to tear down that wall. It's like Clinton calling us to build a bridge to the 21st century, except this time the Promised Land Project is not a response to an external enemy or an external threat. It's a response to an internal threat. You hear me? We have a civil war going on here. We can talk about it or not talk about it. It's true. I'm going to solve it with your help through marketing. I want to play you a video. I have no rights to the music. Don't you film this shit. Okay. 
I have no rights to the pictures, but I will. This is the feel, and I'm going to tell you specifically, so could we play that video? Living in the promised land Our dreams are made of steel Proud of every man Is to know how freedom feels That is a winding road Across the shifting sand And room for everyone Living in the promised land We can do this. Purpose appeals to the best instincts. And if we give up on America, our best instinct will all go dark because the Civil War causes that. So I'm launching this because I'm the keynote speaker at South by Southwest. Not a bad crowd. Can we put up that slide real quick? That's a good cover for my book. But anyway, <laughs> this is just a sample. Haley's helping me with it. But this is America winning on purpose. By the way, it's a double meaning. Winning on purpose. We intend to win on purpose. And we're going to win on purpose. So let me tell you the premises of the road to purpose. Number one. We're going to have the most amazing digital gurus in America to be a force for good. Bannon, all that stuff, we know how to do the same thing, except we're going to be a force for good. And it starts with the idea that we've got to get young people to run for public office now. Our leaders are old as dirt. Kennedy was 42. Clinton was 42. Theodore Roosevelt was 39. We got to get young people who are dying for purpose to realize the political world can be a purpose driven world. And so, part of our whole digital thing is if you're thinking about running for office, come to us and we're going to have the Jim Collinses, the Haley Rushings, anybody on video. You push it and say, look, we know how to do purpose-inspired leadership in corporate America. If you want to be a level five leader in politics, here's how you do it. So we need purpose-inspired leaders instead of politically driven, power-driven leaders. Number two, we have to, as American, respect the dignity of all work again. We have to walk in each other's shoes again. We have to go back to the original premise when we're at our best, no one's too good, and everybody's good enough in this country. Third, we have to stop the myth that a four-year college career is the only path to a successful life. It's bull. (laughs) 
There are hundreds of thousands of jobs out there paying $70,000 a year. No one's applying for it because counselors in the ninth grade and elitists in our country say you're a loser if you don't go to college. We're, we're going to market the hell out of this, people. Third, God made us all different, and we judge our kids on standardized tests. Really? That's the only thing we judge our kids on? Quick story. Eighth grade, you remember cursive? Okay, I turn in a paper on Emerson. My mom's a school teacher. I got eight misspelled words, big C minus. C's were not celebrated at my house. She didn't say anything. Next year, studying Emerson again with a teacher named Mrs. Levesey. I'm in the ninth grade. I said, Mom, I can't do it. She said, just do the best you can. I turned it in. I still have them. Instead of eight misspelled words, there are 11. It's all red, and there's a tiny A minus. I went to my mom, and I said, I don't get it. And she said, you can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> But Mrs. Levesey thinks you can write. And at 14, stay with me here, my mother cut a bargain with me at 14 years old. She said, I don't want you to spend another second of your life trying to be average at what you're bad at. I want you to spend the rest of your life becoming great at what you're good at. We've got to teach our kids in the ninth grade, by the way, every strength finder coaches, raise your hand, yep, we got strength finders in every school in Atlanta this year. So every ninth grader, if you can't spell, they're going to find out what your strength are. We got to celebrate the miracle of America again. We got to ask people, not what you want to do. Who has kids? Real quick question. Stop asking your kids, what do they want to do? You don't know what you want to do and you're old as dirt too. <laughs> ask them, what do they love to do? And then it's, we need a million new companies to start every year, not just in the coast, but in the heartland. And it goes on. Though we're not going to be just, this is not kumbaya. This is real stuff that we're going to market the hell out. My time's up. I hope my life isn't. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've got work to do, don't we? Uh, I think part of the, and by the way, that one of the central ingredients of the Promised Land Project, we're going to market conscious capitalism. We're going to market the hell out of it. So it's not just an isolated thing. I need help so I don't violate the principles, but I'm going to do it anyway. So uh, <laughs> that's just, but we have a chance. And final thing, my wish, my birthday was yesterday. I look fabulous. And <laughs> when I blew out the candles, I said, my wish for a birthday is this. Nine years from today, it's 2026. It's America's 250th birthday. I want to look back to this day and this time that we said we answered the call to build a culture of us so America can start winning on purpose. God bless y'all. Thank you. Thank you.